Okay, hello everyone. My name is Patricia and I'm the marketing manager of the Yoga Loft in Cabarete. And I'm really happy that we continue, continue our interview series. And today we are having Zeb from the Yoga Factory in Pittsburgh with us. Hi Zeb, hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you today? Good, good, thank you. How about you introduce yourself? Sure. Um, oh, what should I say? <laughs> uh, so again, yeah, my name is Zeb. Uh, I owned the Yoga Factory in Pittsburgh for 10 years now. Wow. It's pretty crazy to think about. Yeah. Um, I, I'm from Pittsburgh originally, but I had moved away after, you know, for college, for university, and never really thought that I would come back. Wow. Um, and somehow along the journey, I fell in love with yoga and started teaching and traveling all over the world and somehow just ended back up in my hometown running a studio. I guess running a studio. <laughs> it's what Pittsburgh needed. A magic alignment of uh, the universe out there called you back. Yeah. Yes. So for me, um, I mean, I, of, I'm German, so I see a lot of my, so now I'm 40, I see a lot of my school friends moving back to our little hometown. For you, that was not the reason. They just want to go back to their roots. They, they explored uh, the world a little bit, and now it was just time to t return home for them. And for you, it was just like something magically opened up and you saw the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, for me, I've always had a a real connection to some place more like the Dominican Republic, like a beach and sand and ocean. And Pittsburgh gets pretty pretty darn cold in the winter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm 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 here and I'm loving it. The community that we've built at the studio is amazing. And, you know, I still have a sort of a retirement plan where I'm going to find a, a beach somewhere. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. But do you want to talk a little bit more about the, uh, how that happened? I know that you have a, a background in dance, physical theater and mask work. And how did yoga then happen? I, so in university, I actually, I majored in musical theater. Uh -huh. um, and during that time, I got exposed to all sorts of different, you know, performance, uh, you know, just theater itself. And then, yeah, um, mask work and a lot of dance. And yeah, um, that was my focus for a long time, like coming out of um, high school and moving into college, like that was my track. I was really into performing and um, it was sort of a, a passion of mine and yoga was sort of always in the background. Like even when I was a small child, I remember like doing yoga postures and chanting Om with my mom, like, you know, just for, you know, it was just something that she thought would be good for me, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I took a yoga class in college. Um, I think it was one of our required like movement classes. And yeah, it's just sort of like, it kept like popping back into my life at certain points. And then after college, I lived in New York for a couple of years. And then I moved to San Francisco. And when I was in San Francisco, I just sort of stumbled into a yoga studio there. And I, would, like, I was looking for a job and they were hiring. So I started working at their front desk and practicing like, it just like came naturally. I, wow. I started practicing like every day. And before I knew it, I was at teacher training and <laughs> you know, the rest is just it's traveling all over the world. And, yeah. yeah, teaching, yep. yeah. Interesting. So it quite, uh, it was, yeah, kind of not a decision you made. It just happened. It called you and uh, you morphed yeah. into it. Okay. Yeah. At that point in my life, I was really, theater 
was a little bit frustrating. Like I wasn't getting the roles that I wanted and I sort of backed off from that. And I, I just sort of like threw myself out to the universe. I was like, I don't know what's next. Wow. What should I be doing? And yoga just sort of like stepped in and was took over. there. Yep. Nice. Nice. Yep. Yeah. That sounds really nice. Yeah, I love these stories. <laughs> a totally different angle because we know so, I mean, yeah, a lot of people find this uh, psychological and physical healing. And for you, it was like, yeah, it was there for you when you needed it and gave you yeah. meaning and purpose in life. Beautiful. Yep. Um, do you want to talk to us a little bit about how the yoga scene in Pittsburgh is? That's now quite the... Uh, yeah <laughs> move to a different topic but i sure, have no absolutely. idea we don't have that many guests uh, of, on from pittsburgh or pennsylvania yeah, yeah. um you know, pittsburgh is a really interesting town um it it started out as like a, a steel town like steel mills and trains and coal dust and like it was a really industrial city and it's it still kind of has that reputation of just like blue collar, very hardworking, a little bit dirty, not very glamorous. <laughs> and it's not that anymore. Like, even when I was growing up here, it was still a little bit like in a slump, in a depression, because all the steel mills had left, but nothing had come in to replace it. And now it's, it's gone through this renaissance of there's a lot of industry here now, like um, pharmaceutical and the tech industry has, has kind of jumped in. And um, it's always, it's, it's a really beautiful city. The, it's like hilly and wooded and there are rivers running right through the center of the city. Um, so yeah, it's just a great, it's kind of like a well-kept secret. Like it's uh -huh. a beautiful um the people here are wonderful and yeah I, it's just a really great town so the the yoga scene here when i first moved back and took over the studio uh there were there were a few yoga studios around um my studio at the time was primarily a hot yoga studio and then there were, you know, like four or five other big ones in the area that were sort of like the go-tos. And over the course of the past 10 years, it's just exploded. There are like studios almost every, every block, you know, <laughs> like um, you walk down the street and it's hard to miss a yoga studio. Okay. Um, so yeah, the community has really <clears throat> developed really quickly. And I think it's just, it's really telling that people want something like yoga in their lives that helps them feel better physically, helps their mind focus, helps de-stress. And, you know, whatever, whatever reason you come in the door and start your yoga practice, you sort of get all of that, the body, mind, spirit, like all of that connection. You start working on that, even if you're just there to, you know, tighten your abs or, you know, whatever it is, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do a soft <laughs> workout. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sounds really interesting. But, um, I mean, you said then somehow it happened that you opened up your own studio or took that yoga factory over just 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, that's just how it happened or was there, again, it's, no magic it's not moment? Quite that simple. Um, <laughs> There is a, a woman that I went to teacher training with um, in 2007 that was also from Pittsburgh. Okay. And so we had a connection already. And she, at the time, was living in New York City. So when we left teacher training, she went back to New York. And she and her husband decided to move back to Pittsburgh and open the studio. Mm-hmm. So they had been open for about a year and a half, almost two years. And when she opened, she contacted me and was like, come back to Pittsburgh and teach or, you know, help manage the studio. And I was like, no. 
I didn't want to, I was all just in world traveling mode and I didn't really want to be tied down to a studio, especially in my hometown. Not, yeah. Um, and she kept kind of like poking at me. She was like, come back, come back, come back. And finally she offered to sell me the studio. And I was still just kind of like, I don't really want to go to Pittsburgh. And she, she just kept twisting my arm and finally convinced me to buy the studio from her. Okay. And yeah, she, she also runs another company with her husband that's been really successful over the past, you know, 10 years. Okay. So, so she, she, she really developed have, into something else. She's still right. in Pittsburgh. She is. And she okay. didn't really have the time to do both. So oh, okay. the, the studio needed somebody to really care for it. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you, you just took over. It was an immediate success. The community was growing <laughs> or how did that work? <laughs> I mean, yeah. When I, when I came, I brought a couple of friends, teachers with me and we really like pumped some energy into it. And that, that time it was like 2010 to 2013 or so there was like this real explosion of yoga like all over the world, all over the US at least, I think mm -hmm. worldwide. Mm -hmm. And it was really popular. People were just like swarming into the studio. So it was just kind of, I mean, yeah, it was, it was an immediate success. Wow, yeah. Um, whether it was because of me or just the time, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really good. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I just tried to remember where was I in, two, in 2010, 2013. Yeah. Yeah, I think for us it came in Germany, it came a little bit later. I, I think it was, we constantly had some kind of a underground scene, but that was more like the hippies, the, right. yeah, yeah, who were I think practicing that was that very far east and then suddenly became mainstream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of power yoga in the gyms for sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, uh, what I saw on your website is that you have quite a bunch of t um, teachers, right? You are a big community yeah. of teachers. Yep. Yeah. We, the studio, I think right now we have 15 or 16 people on staff. Uh huh. Um, yeah, and then we've actually, over the past, I think four or five years, we've been running a teacher training for hot yoga as well. I've, mm -hmm. I've also done vinyasa trainings. Um, but yeah, we have, oh, my cat wants to come say hi. <laughs> wants to say hi. Um, hi, cat. <laughs> but yeah, we have a, a pretty, pretty decent community of teachers here and kind of spread out over the country. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And how big is your, your student community? It's good. Um, I mean, right now it's tricky because some people just don't want to come back and be in the studio at the moment. But I mean, I'd say we probably have like 300, 400 people that come in on a regular basis wow. yeah. in, in normal times, you know? Yeah. 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 I, I tried to phrase a question around how community looks like for you. It looks, it sounds like such a lame question. Sorry, that's all I come up with. <laughs> no, it's, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, I think really community is, it's so important to a yoga studio. It's like the, the heart of the studio. You can have great teachers, you can have an amazing facility, but unless you have the, the students that are there and willing to learn and willing to be there and like change their bodies and their minds, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've seen over the past 10 years that the community, the studio has sort of become its own entity. Um, I don't run the community. I mean, I'm, I'm there running the studio and managing the teachers, but the students all have their own relationships with each other and with the teachers. And um, it's grown into this really beautiful thing. And I don't think, 
like right now during the shutdown, the lockdown and the pandemic, I don't think the studio would have survived if the community hadn't been so strong and so tight knit beforehand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They all still really care about the studio and care about each other. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason that we're, we're all still here. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you do that famous uh, yogic expression, you hold space for the community right. and then Absolutely. let them breathe and shape it themselves. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, hot yoga comes from Bikram and, you know, I'm pretty isolated here on that island. So my, all my knowledge is from Instagram, basically. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of discussion around, uh, yeah, um, diversity, um, um, black people in yoga and, um, yeah, making yoga accessible for all shapes. And of course you have that difficult history with Bikram. How did you navigate oh. all of that? It's that tricky. Is that a topic in, in, for you in, in Pittsburgh as well? It, I mean, yeah, it, it comes up. Um, I mean, especially now with the, the Me Too movement and the Black Lives Matter movement, um, you know, all of those things are really important to people, important to community and as a as a yogi i really like i want people to feel comfortable and i want people to connect and to feel like the space is a safe space for them as a business owner it's really tricky to to navigate and to figure out like what's the right thing to say at the right time um so yeah it's hard to sort of balance those two mm -hmm. um, especially with the, the background, like you said, of Vikram Chaudhary and his, his antics um, that have already been through the media so many times. And like, we've, we've lost students just because they've heard about this guy and you know the weird, nasty things that he's done, mm -hmm. um, even though we have no connection with him, really. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, all of that is, it's real and it's, it's hard to navigate and it's hard to have conversations about. Mm. And I, you know, I really just try to like address it as it comes up with people, as it comes up with students, you know, if they come and ask a question, I'll be as open and as honest as I can be about it. Mm. Um, yeah, and really just, like I said, keep the space a safe space for everybody in the community. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And that you really consciously make that effort and are aware of what's going on and yeah, mm -hmm. see what comes up from your community. And um, right. yeah, yeah, that sounds great. And uh, yeah, end of January, it, I jump now again to a totally different topic. Um, like a, a roller coaster ride. A roller coaster interview here. <laughs> Um, we spoke already a little bit about the uh, yeah, pandemic, what happened to you, the, the numbers went down, of course, you immediately were able to offer some, um, tell me, some online classes. Yeah, we, it's funny, we, or lucky, I guess, we, I had already been thinking about trying to do some online, like recordings and just like offer some classes that way. So I had bought some equipment months before the, the lockdown the shutdown happened and just total random circumstance. I was thinking about doing it. And so when the pandemic happened and we had to shut down the studio, we were already like halfway there to where we needed to be. And I have a, a teacher that has gone through film school. So she oh. had a lot of really great suggestions and ideas. And so, yeah, we've, we've built sort of this in-studio, it's almost like a TV studio. <laughs> <laughs> Two different cameras and, um, yeah, it's, it's been kind of fun actually building this whole new, it's like a whole new business really, like yeah. street online. And um, yeah, we were able to keep in touch with our students and, still keep classes going and you know people were really appreciative to be able to do yoga in their homes uh and stay connected so okay. it was really good yeah 
you know, challenging and hard for everybody, but it was, we were able to sort of like, not bypass, but we're persevere through that. Yeah. And now we're doing, so our studio has reopened and we're at, you know, much smaller capacity than we were pre pandemic, but we're still doing some of those online classes. So we're doing sort of a hybrid approach right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you already attract uh, people from all over the world with your online offerings or is it at the moment exclusively for your... Um... I'd say it's mostly for our, our students. Okay. We, I mean, I think because of the pandemic, everybody shifted to, to online. And I mean, we've had some of our students that have moved away and they, they're living in different parts of the world. Like some of them have tuned into classes cool. and it's actually really fun to see them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as far as attracting a wider audience, I think it's something that I'm interested in, but I think the market is just so flooded right now. Like mm -hmm. everybody and their mother is online teaching classes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happens in the future, Absolutely. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of the future, end of January, you come to us to Cabarete yes. as a retreat. Yeah. What do you love I'm about hosting retreats? Very excited about that. <laughs> yeah. I've been hosting retreats for years now, and I one of my favorite things about it is going to new places and exploring. And I, as I said earlier in the interview, I'm partial to places with oceans and beaches, <laughs> <laughs> and sunshine. Um, but yeah, I, it's actually years ago now, I, when I was living in New York, I had a couple of coworkers, friends that were from the DR and they would just talk about it nonstop about how beautiful it was and how much they missed it. And it's always been a place that I wanted to go and visit. So yeah. I'm really, I'm just, super excited to come and explore the Dominican Republic and do some great yoga there and build community. One of the great things about retreats is that you get to pull in people from, you know, not just your studio, but people from all over that are interested in coming and sharing yoga and exploring. Exploring the island. Yeah. And just, yeah. Having having some good relaxing time away from all the stress and tension of your normal life. Yeah, mm -hmm. and breathe a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, nice. especially right now. I know it's a little bit stressful to try to figure out like travel and is it safe and should I be going. But I think it's really important to take a take a little time to take care of yourself. Yeah. And to go to a beautiful location and be around great people and do yoga and meditate and just breathe. Like yeah, just said. yeah, yeah. I think that's really important. It is, it is. And I mean, I don't want to talk too much about us right now, but it's really a, it's really very open space. So you will never be locked in, in a room kind of. So there will always be fresh air circulating. We keep the footprint very small. So it's, a, it's an absolute yeah. safe experience. It's all Your clean. Your yoga space, isn't it La Palapa? It's like open air? It's an open air studio. It's yeah. an open air shala with the Kana roof facing yeah. the ocean. Yeah, so it's all open space. The rooms are also, as you know, uh, yeah, no air condition. It's all kind of an open layout. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, it's... And anyway, we are a small space. You will have the, the resort kind of on your own. <laughs> um, there, there will be only a couple of other people hang out. So it's, yeah, safe Thanks. bubble. And we also, we really keep the space closed exclusively yeah. for our guests because we don't want to have the entire beach running through anymore due to the right. pandemic. So, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm psyched, I can't wait. You, yeah. What do we have now? Beginning of October. So yeah, a couple of more months, then you will be yep. there. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit as a last question, at least from my side about the vision? For, for, for me, it sounds like, yeah, everything kind of, 
aligns for you, but do you have a vision for the yoga factory? Do you have any goals? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, so the studio and the, my, my vision for the, the company as a whole has sort of expanded and contracted a couple of times now. I've, over the years, I've owned two other like additional studios that, you know, have been like sort of side ventures and I've had to close them for various reasons. Um, the last one right before the pandemic happened. Um, I would love to see Yoga Factory grow and become a space for not just for students to grow and explore and shift their lives, but for teachers, yoga teachers, to really have a space where they can um, like push boundaries and grow in their teaching and their practices and be supported and safe, like have a career instead of just being like yoga as a side job. Mm. Um, yeah, I would like to see that happen. And I'm not quite sure, like I said, I, like, I've tried to push it in that direction a couple of times already, and it's, it's been resisting. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be my, my ideal direction to take it in the future. But like I said earlier, it's kind of got a life of its own at this point. So okay. I'm just here to hold space and to help guide it. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Let's see what's yeah. happening, right? Yeah, Absolutely. maybe yep. do more retreats, <laughs> right? Which is also, I think, an entire art on its own, right? It is absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yep, a different yeah. creature. Yeah. People think sometimes that when you lead a retreat, that you're going on vacation, and it's the exact opposite. Like, you're. It's fun and it's enjoyable, but when you're leading a retreat, you have to be totally present and there for the people all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think it's very exciting that you go to a new place. Uh, you bring another teacher with you, I believe, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Absolutely. Is there anything you would like to add? I don't have any more questions then. No. Um, I'm just, like I said, I'm super excited to come and visit and to explore the island and to, to spend time with you and your staff. Thank you so much, Seth. Yeah. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you soon with us. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for being with us. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Yep. <laughs>